With us now on the phone is award-winning journalist Craig Carpell. He is the author of The 12-Step Guide for the Recovering Obama Voter. And Craig, it's so good to have you with us today. Good to be with you. Well, you start the book with this bit of satire. My name is Craig Kay, and I'm an Obama-holic. What's an Obama-holic, and have you recovered yet? Well, uh... I, we're, we're, we're all, as a nation, we're recovering uh, Obama-holics, and cer- certainly I hope to recover completely by Election Day. But what I'm really trying to suggest is that uh, in order to understand the, uh, the mindset and the way uh, folks who uh, voted for Obama during the last cycle, uh, the way to understand it is as a set of what I call political addictions. And if we want to change these people's minds, and uh, uh, get them to uh, not have a relapse uh, on November 6th, uh, we need to address uh, them with uh, the reality of these addictions and what they can do to get clean from them. Talk to us about these debilitating political addictions and how they uh, led this nation to elect a President Barack Obama. And, uh, Craig, is the nation on the verge of making a mistake come this November? Uh, I certainly hope not. Uh, let's put it this way: they won't make the same. I hope they don't make the same mistake. Mm-hmm. Now, a Zogby poll released today has Barack Obama and Mitt Romney basically tied. Given the mess that is the U.S. economy right now, why do you think Barack Obama is doing as well as he is? I think that the addictions that I point to in my book are still very much uh, in effect. It's tough. To, it's tough to get rid of an addiction. A, a, a good definition of an addiction is. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the, having the habit of indulging in something that one has a hard time separating oneself mm-hmm. from. And I think that the American people are still very much mired in the web of political addictions that they were suffering from back in 08. Right. I mean, for example, the, 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 one of the addictions I point to in my book is addiction to blame. Well, uh, if anything, the, 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 the blaming is worse in this cycle than in the previous one. And people appear to be falling for it hook, line, and sinker. Mm-hmm. Uh, George W. Bush is responsible for the bad economy. The Republican Congress is responsible for not passing uh, 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 tax, uh, whatever he calls it, tax cuts that are actually tax increases. Um, uh, Wall Street, fat cat, Wall Street, 1%, uh, people who are sending jobs to China. It's all about blame. Right. And this is catering to what I identify in the book as an actual political addiction. There's a need that the American voter has to blame someone for their current situation rather than realizing that we've all got to get together, uh, uh, pull together, and, and, and write this vessel before it goes right back on the same rocks it went to before. Now, real quickly, what are the other political addictions that you point out in the book? Well, uh, the, uh, the, one of the, the most powerful one is denial, because in order to get clean from any addiction, uh, you need to uh, recognize what they are. And uh, one of the addictions in this case is actually an addiction to denial itself. Uh, you know, denial is our inner mind saying to our outer mind, nothing to see here, uh, just move along. And as long as American voters are going to uh, be hooked on denial, uh, they're going to have a very hard time getting clean by uh, November 6th. Craig, in the book, you point to Obama's ability to sway voters with his silver tongue back in 2008. Looking toward his big speech at the Democratic National Convention this week, what can we expect to hear from him? Well, I would say uh, more of the same. I mean, he has this line of, uh, uh, of that he somehow represents hope, he somehow represents change. Uh, the campaign slogan is forward. Uh, it reminds me of the lemmings heading off the cliff. I mean, we need we need a president uh, who uh, understands that the uh, problems that this country faces are actually situations that need to be addressed and managed, not somebody who claims that he has the magic solution for them. And that's another one of the addictions, is the addiction to what I call problemism, solutionism. Mm-hmm. Everything that we're facing now is a problem. Every problem we're facing has a solution. It's not true. What we have is long-term situations, such as, for example, uh, the rise of Islamism in the, in the, uh, uh, in the uh, Muslim world, which this president uh, has pretty much been single-handedly responsible for. We need to get clean from these addictions. We need to, and in order to, uh, to convince our friends, our relatives, our co-workers not to vote for this guy, uh, I, I hope they'll uh, 
open up my book and see what these addictions are and address themselves to them, and that we'll be able to uh, chip away at this guy's poll numbers. Craig, when it comes to attacking his opponent, Mitt Romney, will Barack Obama be able to meet a burden of proof with his negative attacks? And if not, do you think that that will backfire with voters? I think it resonates with voters. I think that the voters are addicted to blame. Uh, uh, this president has is blaming uh, Romney for... Uh, sending jobs to China, for example, because of his role in the private equity industry. Um, uh, rather than saying, well, we needed to send jobs to China because wage structure in the United States was too high for people in this country to afford to buy those goods. Mm -hmm. No, it's about blame, and we're blaming Obama, excuse me, we're blaming Mr. Romney uh, for outsourcing for uh, economic difficulties. Uh, we can, we can uh, complain that it's not fair. We can object to it. Uh, the fact of the matter is American voters are addicted to it, and the only way they're going to not vote for blaming the other guy is to do a little work on their own minds and hearts and souls uh, in the next couple of months. Okay, let's talk more about getting America on the path to recovery, Craig. Um, real quickly, walk us through the highlights of your 12-step program for attaining what you describe as voting sobriety. Well, the first step is to uh, represent is to is to realize that this guy represents uh, 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 himself as some sort of uh, uh, religious figure. Okay, he really uh, still tries to convey this feeling that he has a messianic calling, and that if we believe in him and go quote forward unquote with him, that we will be led to uh, the millennium. So that's the very first thing that we need to just get mm -hmm. out of our heads. Mm -hmm. This is not a messianic figure. This is a politician. This is a guy who was in the uh, Illinois State Senate uh, not long before he became president of the United States. He's just another slick Paul, and this is the line that he has chosen, and it's working, and he's sticking to it. Uh, the second is uh, our addiction to charisma. As a nation, we expect political figures to be stars. In the past, we were very happy if a political figure uh, was capable of doing something like a, a President Eisenhower built the interstate uh, highway system. We were not interested in Eisenhower's star quality. We were interested in his highway building ability. Uh, we, uh, we became addicted to narratives, stories. Uh, this guy, he wrote one autobiography. When that didn't work uh, all the way for him, he wrote a second autobiography. He said in an interview not long ago that his problem was not his policies. It was that he had not told the American people enough of a story to support uh, the stimulus, for example. So we need to get clean from this notion of being addicted to what I call narrative, which is stories, which is, you know, really a fancy word for fairy tales. Craig, last question for you. You describe yourself as a community organizer of the 70s and advisor to the far-left firebrand Abby Hoffman. You also, I understand, counseled John Lennon during the late Beatles' involvement in American leftist politics. How did you come around to writing this book? I felt it was my duty. This was my, uh, my, um, uh, the recompense that I owe this country is to tell uh, what, what I became addicted to, which, what I became clean from, and which American voters need to take a look into their own hearts and their souls and get rid of these political addictions before Election Day, and especially for conservatives to buy this book and give it to their liberal friends, give it to their co-workers, give it to the family members, instead of arguing with people around them and saying, you're wrong, I'm right, you're wrong. Give them a book and say, here, read this, and let's sit down and discuss it. Maybe there are some things in here that, are, uh, that, that, that will help clarify your thinking. All right, again, the book is The 12-Step Guide for the Recovering Obama Voter. Craig Carpell, thanks so much for being with us. You're very welcome. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.